on. Boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a good show for you guys today. Our guest has a journey, which is a testament to what determination and hard work and innovation can achieve. So stay tuned for this episode, which is filled with insight and stories of success and say cheese. Shut up and sit down. Look, a business can give you everything you want in life. Prestige, wealth, freedom. It can also take everything away from you. This show is for those who are willing to take that risk. These are the real life stories of entrepreneurs. But before we start, I have one small favor to ask. Please leave a comment. It can be advice, critiques, tips, feedback, or share this with someone because your engagement is the most valuable and most powerful form of social currency. So thank you. And welcome to another episode of Business Boss. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a truly inspirational guest whose journey from humble beginnings to becoming the godfather of Mexican cheese in the United States is nothing short of remarkable. From a cardboard bed in a cheese factory to pioneering the production of specialty Mexican cheeses, his story is a testament to great innovation and entrepreneurial spirit. But that's just the beginning. Stay tuned as we delve into his cheese empire, his commitment to sustaining farm or sustainable farming, and his quest to develop a unique national dog breed for Mexico. So let's welcome to the show, Mr. Miguel Leo. <laughs> Yo, welcome to the party. <laughs> Thank you very much for your, inviting me to your show. Really appreciate okay. it. To be of here. course, man, of course. Let's talk about, um, I always start off every show with the, the same obvious question that, that we need to get across, right? Everybody's here promoting something. They have something that they want to sell, something that they want to get their message in front of uh, more and more people. What is that for you? What are you doing here today? Well, today I'm, today... For the new recipe, for for my for the new recipes, this is what I, you want me for the new cheese projects that I have. Sure, whatever it is that you want to talk about today. Well, if you want me to explain to you how I start with my business and my cheese, what is the adrenaline to start for me, the business that I jump into the United States and start the cheese? And really, the whole thing start because. In Mexico, I didn't have any poten any ways to grow in my country. And then I decided to come here and promise to my love, to my ex-wife, that I was going to start it a, a really a new life for her and push push the the hardest I could to get the adventure to the dream goes through. That was my idea to promise her for love. So I was going to make it the, in the beginning. And how I started it, my education of my dad uh, started with me. It was a really tough, kind of like I was teaching me to, to this moment, to, to make it in the United States. Because to be an immigrant, you need to, to have really a strong will that you want to make it in your mind. You cannot, you can, uh, you cannot make any bad mistakes, bad mistakes and bad decisions. It's, it's a really tough situation that I was in to make the decision to come to the United States. But finally, I define it and I never give up. I, I always try to, to, to do it. The, the, what the life was teaching me. So. Let me let me ask you about the the education because um like you said when you when you my parents are from Mexicali like they I, I'm the first generation here in the United States I was given a great opportunity to build a life here um that they had to struggle to bring over to to just kind of start over here Mm -hmm. uh, but they went kind of the, the, the corporate America route. They all, they got jobs and then, you know, they, they did that sort of thing. You're kind of taking on this whole thing as an entrepreneur, as a business owner to start your own venture. Um, and it's kind of difficult for that education to pass forward, but you were telling me a little bit about what you learned from your dad and what he taught you to be here. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that's, that is the most important for me is how I took it because we are five brothers. 
and everybody, my dad was a little bit tough in life. Kind of like a, sometimes I didn't think that I, what I was coming to this world for, because it's always I see aggressive, uh, uh, never pay attention to his kids. Uh, and really, the alcohol change a lot of personalities in life. And it's hard to make it without a father to guide you or a people to lead you where you have a lot of questions and a lot of fears, most of it. And it, that is the most principle when you stick with one idea in a young hood time. You know, whether you're talking about those teenagers and it, in sense now is the way you start forming your ideas. And this, what you want to fight for it. That is the education or your dad give me to be strong and to be tough and to be different and have the personality to jump in with, and go for it and stick to it. And, and that was one part of it of my life that really make a lot of difference. Even since my dad uh, was even trying to drown me in, in a tough conditions, you know, and forget about me and see you later and try to kill me. I try to give up, I try to forget and take that for a lesson to, to stick harder to what my ideas was. Yeah, sometimes we don't know what is really going on as a parent. You know you're trying to provide for your kids. You know you're trying to do what is in, what is necessary for them to have the opportunities. And when we're young, sometimes we look at it as they didn't care. And when you get older, you realize they cared a lot. They, they were actually there to help you kind of push you along. They just had to go to work every day to take care of those things. Uh, and it kind of weighs on, on an individual for sure. Uh, let me ask you about going into the cheese business. You said you were going to focus on one thing and get that one thing successful. Why cheese? Yeah. The, the cheese that I tried to, to make it today is it's a new kind of breed because Mexican cheese uh, really, it lose his his flavor, and when you run it industrial wise, because it's more artisanal, and when you run it in a push it in a fast production, kind of like a lose the the taste of it of the originality, and that is what I'm working now, you know, to keep going, and in that kind of speed, the making the product, I would like to I'm putting science with the University of Wisconsin to put the cheese more like uh, the taste of it. It should be the, the, the real taste because the industrial wise, the change flavors. It, it does, it, it can change flavors. It does change flavors. I think, uh, I know growing up, my, my parents would take me to uh, some of the ranchos out there and they would make the cheese right there. And it has a different, way better flavor when you have it fresh exactly. and when it starts getting processed over time. So yeah, I, I totally understand that. Um, but at the same time, you need to grow, right? You need to be able to sell more and more and more of this cheese. So you're trying to figure out a, a solution to that kind of problem. And earlier you said, you know, when you're an immigrant, you come to this country, you start your own business. It's very difficult to make mistakes. But unfortunately, in business, we always make some mistakes. What were some of those mistakes that you've made in your business that you learned from that maybe helped you get to where you are today? Yes, we all we we make always mistakes. What I'm trying to, to, to tell you in that in that point is to learn from it. A lot of people is blaming in, in another persons and blaming more persons and and it really they, they don't fix the problem. See, and it's better to find out where the real problem and don't blame nobody and start planning better to that things don't happen. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because uh, I always feel like if you if you blame, if you point the finger at somebody, you have zero control. You're dependent on what they're going to do, how they're going to react, if they're going to change before something ever happens to you. But the moment you take your own accountability for that, where you say, all right, this is my fault. I made this mistake. What can I learn from it? You're in control. All of a sudden, you're the one who can say, well, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to do this. I'm going to shape it. I'm going to go here. I'm going to make this change, whatever it is that you need to do to, to make that happen. Uh, let me ask you about your, your journey as an entrepreneur, as, as you got started in the cheese business, 
Um, what was that like saying, okay, I'm going to do it. And then where are you today? Yeah, that's kind of like a, my, the, the only thing I learned because I was, I wasn't a, a good, good, good student. I was really active and really all the time it's distracted because I have a disability to learn. And I use, it's hard for me to read. They need to read it. And I stopped the bullying and, and my, and then I start doing in my own adventures on it. And I decided to do cheese because I have a friend of mine that introduced me with that. And I start talking seriously and I start learning from it. And it's, it's that, that way I, when I started, I stuck with that idea that I was really going to make it. And it's why I jumped to the United States because I know there was a great opportunity to maybe I can learn more. And then we did exchange of technology and I grabbed all the opportunity that I could without getting dizzy, you know, because getting going to United States is one thing, but to start to make it, when you start making, start doing your idea is working on it. Uh, and I started receiving and making money and I didn't want to get myself and to drink a lot, uh, spend my money and women. I get focused in the next idea to make it productive with my money. I didn't get dizzy at all. Is why I try to make the best decisions without any alcohol, any drugs, any uh, anything like that. I try to go for it the other way to be healthy and be more focused in what I was going to do. I think the only drug you fell in love with was love, right? I mean, you said earlier that she was the reason that kept you kind of going, pushing you in the direction that you wanted to go in. Uh, because every business owner, I feel like no matter how passionate and how much you love cheese, uh, there's going to be days where you wake up and you're like, no, nah, I don't want to get up today. No, nah, I don't want to do something today. And there's something that's got to be pushing you to say, no, no, I'm doing this because of X, Y, Z. I'm doing this because I'm in love. I'm doing this because of my kids. I'm doing this because, and it kind of pushes you to do those things on, on those days you don't want to do. Um, talk to me about the, the, the cheese itself. So, okay, you you started in this business. Where do you sell it? Where do you buy it? What's it called? How, how, talk to me about the product. Yeah, well, when I started it, in most of it, I started with queso cotija that I was making and with the Amish milk. And that was a, a good cheese that gave me the right characteristics. And now, I mean, it's a little bit different, but the cheese is all over and all in the and the stores is you can cotija cheese, queso fresco, and all those. It, that is so popular so far than every supermarket in the United States probably have it in a different brands, you know. But most of it is the same formula in quesos frescos and quesos cotijas and all of it. They is kind of like a is so popular that you can find it in in every store. You know, it, it it's it's cool. The day is. And what was that like? Because uh, I can imagine every entrepreneur kind of wants to grow their product, and then somebody picks it up. A big company or a big food chain says, "Yeah, we want your product." Um, and I'm sure it comes with a lot of other problems where all of a sudden you were, your manufacturing has to grow tenfold. Your production has to go. Now you're thinking about logistics and delivery of products and services. Um, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who you said earlier, you were like, I wasn't, I wasn't great at learning. What happened? Did we freeze yeah. again? Okay. So yeah, you can still hear me. Um, yeah. So uh, all of a sudden, the, the thought and the production of, of growing your business, how come that didn't necessarily change? Why is it that, that um, when businesses grow at that certain scale, what happens to your business? What changes do you need to make in order to continue to grow like that? Yeah. First of all, my market, I started with the mom and pop stores. And most of it, I have my own trucks that delivering, you know. And I start with a small amount of trucks. And then pretty soon I have two, 300 trucks delivering to mom and pop stores all over the Midway. And well, of course, a big companies like uh, Walmart, if I can say it, like Walmart, they want to buy all my production, everything away. They, they want to buy everything on it. 
I didn't want to do that. I want to keep going growing with mom and pop stores and have better contact with my customers. I can sell a lot of more in Walmart and my brand could go nationally and everything on it, but I better don't put all the eggs in one basket. I better grow in myself and I only give to Walmart 10% of my production. That is what uh that what it was the key because I control most of it on the market. That was interesting for Sigma Alimentos. You know, that's cool. Yeah. And, and I know because Walmart likes to buy up a lot of different acquisitions and kind of rebrand or white label a lot of their products and services. So for mm -hmm. you to be able to still work with Walmart and yet um, only give up 10% of that production line, that's that's huge. Now I'm going to be definitely looking out for that brand. You said it was Cotijas, right? I'm going to look for that brand. Oh, every time La Chona. The brand is La Chona. La Chona. Okay, I'm definitely going to go look it up because I do my grocery shopping at Walmart. So I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to be like, look, I know. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, awesome. that's awesome. All right. So let me ask you, every company, um, what do you, every company does something really, really well, something that makes them stand out. What do you think that is that, that your company does really well, which is the reason why companies like Walmart want to come and pick up your brand? Yeah, because... Like I said, the start of the mom and papa and papa stores, really Walmart look after uh, what is the new, what is the selling into those small stores, and the doors was open easy for me, you know, that kind of like a, the follow the structure, the big stores calling you because your product is all over the place, and then you control it, you know, it's not like a, they controlling you. Yeah, and that I love that that you maintain control. Now your company is is a lot bigger now. Now it's one of those products that you can find nationwide, which is amazing. What do you feel like you're trying to improve upon? What is it that you're trying to make better? You earlier you talked about new flavors that you're working on, um, but what is it that you feel like your company is, is trying to get better at? Yeah, now the the everything is changed because the the money market. The money, the money, the, the cheese water is, is a big market and the formulas are changing a little bit, you know, and they are producing most of it more money because all the cheese tastes mild is the same flavors on it. And now people is jumping to make it with vegetable oils like they was doing in Mexico too. And the whole technology is changing. You know, and what I'm trying to do now is to have this, the, the recipe, the ethnic recipe, like the really to put formulas uh, the, the, in my formula to have a really flavor because the flavor is gone. It's just, it's a cheese that is mild, do the, the, do the flavor, do the job they're supposed to do and the way you cook it, the way you do it with that, but the flavor is a little bit gone. doesn't taste like a farm in Mexico, like we were saying before. You know, we need to, I want to push that technology to change it, to make the real cheese, the, the real flavor. I want to put science behind it because it's what it takes. Yeah. And, and do you think that's going to come where you, you kind of have to go back into the mom and pop shops? Cause I know like when I go, when I go get cheese, oftentimes, especially queso fresco, I usually don't get it at my huge chains. I'll go to the little, I'm in San Diego. So I, I go to the little marquetas that are around the corner yeah. and that are fresh made because you're exactly right. There's a big difference there, right? And there, there, you get a flavor there that is not normally in the big blockchains. Now, I know you have to do that to be able to sell, you know, millions and millions of, of bars of cheese uh, to, you know, that's that's what works for Walmart. But if you're going to uh, work on a new flavor, are you working on it for like a grand scale or back to the small mom and pop places? Oh, that's what I say. I'm going and work it in the in the big scale, but the same flavor like the mom and pop stores receive in Mexico. The product is so authentic. The cheese I wanted the doesn't the doesn't change that flavor because that is the originality of the product. That is where the people want to taste it. The difference now, and nobody here in the United States is putting that science behind it because the pounds are keep going selling it. See. And that, that will never change. But you give the originality 
you can patent that or you can trademark that and sell that brand uh, and sell the, that cheese. That means you put the rule how the cheese should be made in the United States. Heck yeah. And keep that authenticity because we love that flavor. All right, Miguel, um, you've had a lifetime of knowledge and experience in business. Uh, you came from uh, definitely a struggle when it comes to your education to today where you're talking about patents and trademarks and the technology and growing uh, and growing in the cheese factory. Those are big extremes that you've come across. If you could give advice to young kids that are getting started out there, maybe they're going to get started today. What advice would you give them? Yes. If they want to start it today, stick your idea very heavy. Don't focus on it and never never give up looking in a different angles the answer don't don't put your answers right away calm down breathe and, and really to make the right decisions don't put any feelings in your decisions be the most uh, dry or how can explain cold heart or whatever you say to make the right decision and that yeah that way your idea and your success would be more easy to to achieve you know 100 percent. and let me ask you this because you're you're obviously you speak spanish um and and that is your primary language and yet you brought a business here into the u.s and there's a lot of people i mean especially where i'm at in san diego where uh, for me spanish was my first language but at the same time, it was you need to learn English. And so I've, I've become now more of the I speak more English than I do Spanish. Um, and and your your struggle when it comes to language didn't stop you from achieving success for people that are that are listening right now that maybe their primary language is Spanish and they're afraid or embarrassed or it's a barrier that they put in front of themselves to be able to achieve success. What can you say to people to kind of help them push past that block? Yeah, I mean, keep going and pushing your idea, you know, because that doesn't stop. Because I didn't... Now it's easy for me to express a little... Hold on, my friend, this... Can you repeat me the question, please? Yeah. So it, language. Language is a barrier for a lot of people. How did you push past maybe learning English, coming to the U.S., using English, and and not making it stop you from, from yeah. being successful? In the beginning, I mean, in the beginning, most of it, my customers was in Spanish. Not most of it. And I deal a little bit with, a little bit with American people. You know, because it started like that. And then I started le learning more and more and more English because I didn't take classes for nobody. I just learned from the street and that never stopped me. I, I wasn't embarrassing for anything on it because my ideas doesn't, it was doing something good to the market. And is why I never was afraid of speaking wrong or no, nothing. I didn't care. I learned in the street. I have a tattoo that say graduated for University of Life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is how I take take patience. And see you feel discrimination for it. Forget about it. Your idea is the one they want to move you and push it the hardest you can. Never give up. Never. Plus, you got a great product. I mean, cheese is one of those things that, in my opinion, makes things so much better. Pizza without cheese would never exist. <clears throat> Yesterday, I had birria tacos, but the cheesy birria tacos, it's, it makes it so much better. Cheese is that extra ingredient that brings flavor to life, I think. Uh, and and I, I, I agree with you. Whatever discrimination or embarrassment one might feel, Add a little cheese to it, it'll make it all, all it better, cheese. right? hundred <laughs> percent. So, Miguel, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. If people want to find out more about what you do, um, how can they do that? You can find me in Cheese Guy Success in my Instagram. And the, the, the Cheese Guy Success, I mean, you can follow me there. And uh, I'll be... What is the house that the house that she's built? 
Facebook.com is there, my webpage. So. There you go. I got you. I got you, Miguel. I got your back, man. I got your back. <laughs> Get All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Miguel, thank you very much for being on the show. Cheese goes a long way. I love it. It's one of my favorite toppings that I put on a lot of different things. Now, I asked this, I posed this question to my students. Why is it that when you take a tortilla, you put cheese in it, you fold it, you cook it, it's called a quesadilla. But if you put all the taco fixings first and then you put the cheese, it's a taco. I don't understand the difference. It both makes, the cheese makes it that much better. But uh, anyways, that's a, that's a question for another day. Miguel, thank you very much for being on the program today. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank We're you. Out. Take care. Thanks. It's over. Go home. Is your business in need of marketing? Try starting a podcast. But not just any podcast. Podcast like a pro. We can show you how to take your business from being invisible to becoming a brand people trust. Go to www.businessbros.biz to get started.